do, again, we're gonna be doing an install on my type R. We got the, yes, the high volume intake, the Purell charge pipes, and then of course the beautiful titanium inlet's gonna go in as well too. So. All right, so for you that uh, wanna follow along, it's no issues, we got the screwdriver, the good old pick, got some clamp or some pliers, or clip pliers, clip tool, and then this is the one you guys are gonna wanna definitely check out. I'm gonna be using for most of it. It is a Honda clip tool, so the stubborn clips will come out with no issues at all. We'll get our clips, the little clip tool. So 13 clips up top, two screws for the intake. Well, we're gonna be taking that in uh, air intake box out anyways. To pull it up, it's pretty simple. Literally, you just pull up on it, make sure all your clips are out, and then your first piece is off. There's two more clips actually, let me get you guys involved with that. They're on each side, so they're on the right side and the left side. Now don't be afraid, these clips are always the ones that will break on you. Mm -hmm. So, hit or miss, you never know. So this clip actually, because it's been washed and cleaned by Code Warrior Collective, is good. So a lot of the times, this one came out nice on the passenger side, but as you can tell, someone's been in here before. The clip has broken, but that's no problem. It still works very well. Just pry up on it nicely, and we are away. Okay, so to take the front bumper off, you've seen that top shroud removed. So you're gonna move the rubber just slightly to away from the, the uh, molding, and then just down below, we wanna take a look. It's in there. You're gonna mm -hmm. push down and pull out. So now you have one part of the molding out. We're gonna go a little further up right here. Same deal, we're just gonna go over to the right. Push down, and now we have the entire grill ready to go. And we just do the repeat. There we go. So now you can see the whole grill moving freely at this point. And then right by the corner lens, there are two screws. So you're gonna take the screw out just here. Two more screws. Da, da, da. There are two small clips. One right here, and one right here. Now granted, the bumper is forward a little more, so at least you could see them. But when you are taking the bumper off, you're gonna lift on those tabs. And that's what's holding the bumper in. All right, so now that we have the clips and everything under the car off, or sorry, above the car off, just four screws or four bolts away from taking the bottom off, and we're gonna go back to those clips again. So in the corner here, this is where the fender liner meets the bumper. It's 110 mil. Out she comes. It's a stepped bolt. We're gonna go again to the opposite side. We have two more bolts. So they're, if you're gonna look at the bottom of the bumper, they are basically pulling it back. So usually these little screws are Allen keys. They're five mil Allens, but in this case, they're 10 mils. On the clips, there are gonna be two on this side, one here, Again, where the fender liner meets the bumper, and three down the middle, this is where the intercooler is, and then two more on this side. So with the count of clips, we have two on the fender liner, that's the passenger side, three down the middle, that's for down the middle by the intercooler, and two on the driver side. For bolts counts, that is four, so four bolts, and two, four, three, seven clips. Now that we have those clips off, what we're gonna do is just pull down on these corners, this is where the fog light will meet the bumper. You kind of just reach in behind, pull it down, get your hand in behind there and unplug the fog lights. Down at the bottom. There we go. Yeah, it's a clip or a tab on the connector that you pull up and out towards you. They don't have that um, bulb element. Taking a quick break from the bumper, but I just wanted to show you, if you are looking at the table and it's too many parts, don't be stressed. PRL is actually pretty phenomenal with their parts. They label it. See what it says right in there? Mm -hmm. Now the cool part is, it all comes with their own kits with uh, your clamps and also your hardware. So now we have three things going on today, where we have the inlet, comes with two different uh, silicones. So if you are running the high volume intake with the PRL uh, inlet. It has a longer version and a shorter version. So you can see that they're slightly different to each other. And then for the high volume intake, again, the hardware and the little clips are here as well. So underneath, 
As for removing the bumper, I remember the SIs and Type R's are slightly different. There are three more hidden clips. They're hiding right in above the rad support area, or under the rad support area. There we are. All right. LED connector for the fog lights. You gotta snake your hand in behind here like this. Put your hand above where the fog light will be, and you push down on this tab. Once you push down on the tab, you pull directly out towards the fender liner, and it'll snap right out of place. There are two screws and six clips that hold this under panel in. So you're gonna go ahead and turn it off. So six and two, okay? Firmly just gonna pull back, and out this panel comes. Now, the reason why we're pulling this off is to gain access in behind the charge pipes. What we got here is the hot side, and that will be one of the charge pipes that we're gonna be replacing uh, from a rubber line to a silicone line. So it will come directly off the turbo or the housing and move out into the intercooler. There is a replacement attachment pipe for that as well, as well as a little small bracket that we're gonna be putting in. And then on the opposite side right here, this will be the cold side. So that's where that hose will be going up into the engine bay and we'll be uh, attacking the top half shortly once we're doing the inlet and the intake. Very simple, we're gonna use a small little quarter inch uh, with a 10 millimeter socket on here. We'll start with the long, go to the short. All right, so we're gonna loosen off the pipe just here. All right, so we got that clamp loose. We're gonna wiggle that and fight that in a minute, but there's one more clamp at the top. So I'm cheating. Basically what I'm doing is I'm looking through the one side, seeing where the clamp is, since it's facing the opposite direction, and I'm getting it loose. It'll be the exact same step putting it on as well. All right. So once you get the clamp loose enough, you kind of just slide her down, just squeeze it. So you squeeze the tube as much as you can, and then just kind of pull on it. All right, same thing on the opposite side. We're gonna squeeze it as well, and pull that out. So you can see this one is kind of like your squishy rubber deal. All right, so easiest way to do this without losing track of what goes where is just do one at a time. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that on and we'll get the clamps to match. Again, inside you got your details of where it goes. So we have the car up in the air, but uh, we'll keep the same tools. In the front of the intercooler, since this has been swapped out already, if you had a stock intercooler in there, these will be 12 mil bolts or 10 mil bolts. Don't quote me on that. But now we have these eight mil allens or six mil allens. By the dual horns and crack that loose. All right, so with that inlet pipe, or sorry, hot charge pipe, We'll pull it out and towards the same way we had that rubber pipe come from. So this is your new pipe. You can see the sizing is not too different on the one side where it meets the intercooler, but there's a size difference there. So now that we got that rubber off on the hot side, going from the turbo to the aluminum uh, inlet pipe, going to the turbo. So this will be the cold side, meaning it is returning after the air has been cooled to the end. Cracking these eight mil out, or six mil allens loose, taking them out completely, and then pulling the pipe out. Now that we got those two bolts in the front loose and that bracket off, we're gonna do the same here and remove the clamp on the cold pipe. All right, so now that we got that front half all loose, we're gonna go ahead and take this rubber portion of the hose off by loosening that clamp. And hopefully this pipe comes on just comes off just as easy as the hot side. I'm just gonna move that clamp back and we're gonna do the same thing where we're gonna squeeze and pull this side. Now that we got it pulled off, just move this aside just back a little, pull this towards you. So now that we got the pipe out, we're gonna go ahead and slide this piece out. Yeah, so we're gonna pull back out towards the front of the car. Just cause on the coil rat, since it's a little bit bigger, it doesn't give us enough space to snake it by. All right, so just flip it 180, pull it out towards you, and now you got that pipe. So as you can see, it is bigger for sure. Smoother as well. So now that we have that uh, charge pipe or that uh, aluminum flange out of the way, we're just gonna move this hose over and then let's put the new one in and then we'll start working from the top. So on the pipe itself, it's pretty simple. The PRL logo is always gonna to be to the top. And on that bottom side, they do provide a bracket. What you are gonna do on the stock pipe, you're gonna go ahead and pull this metal portion of the grommet out, 
pull the actual rubber grommet out and then we're going to do the flip side to that. So we know that that flange was coming outwards. We're going to put that bracket that they provide from PRL on the bottom. Three millimeter Allen, two screws. Now we'll take that rubber grommet again, squeeze it through, metal side to the bottom. And now the screw that we took out, it's in there. We're going to use that as well to rock it down. All right, so on the flange here, there is a rubber gasket. You want to make sure that it's well seated and it's still on the actual intercooler itself before we put this pipe in. Because once we do that, you got to remember, that's the seal between the two flanges. So we'll go ahead and slide that in. The pipe went in with, with ease once we were able to move it out of its grommet. So now I can put it back into place and move it in. Look at that. Let's get the two bolts. And then this section is done. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just go in reverse. You see me take it off, we're just putting it back on. That is the little 10 mil that holds it into place. And that's it, nice and tight, nothing too wild. And then the bracket. So PRL provides this little plastic washer, you put that in first, and then you pop the rest into place from there. So now that this side is all done, we have the cold side aluminum piece attached to the intercooler. We're gonna go ahead and attach the hot side pipe. Since we're under here, might as well just get it done. Now this is not an ad for Ozzy, but this is the secret. So what you usually do to make life easier is you just give it a quick little spritz on the inside. Now what this does is it'll act as a lubricant to go on and then as it dries, it'll kind of glue itself into place. Don't forget your clamps. Make your life easier, put it in a place that you can reach it. You gotta move a little quickly when you do have hairspray on it, because it has a tendency to dry pretty quickly. If you see here on the pipe, it's all the way up. That's where you want it to be. And then on the turbo, it is all the way up as well. So we're gonna have two uh, sockets this time, quarter inch, but this time around, it's gonna be an eight mil, all right? Coming off a of factory is a 10 mil. Using that same swivel socket and an eight mil, now what you want to do is once you get it tight, just go ahead and use that eight mil directly on the clamp. And that's just to verify, to make sure that everything is super snug. You gotta remember, this is gonna be running boost, so it will be putting a lot of pressure on those clamps. So if they are not tight, it will pop off at some point in time. All right, now that we got the car back down on the ground, we're gonna attack the inlet in a moment, but we're gonna take the air box out for now. So this is a stock air box, it's super simple. We're gonna disconnect the master flow sensor, a few tabs are here, and your wiring is out of the way. There are two bolts uh, holding it in, 10 mil Allen on a nice little extension. That's one at the top by the battery, and the other is just down below. What I like to do is I use a magnet just to pull on them, make sure that they're in place. So sometimes they like to come loose, like that one. All right, let's use that eight millimeter wrench once more. We'll take the clamp off on the air box. So we're gonna pull this pipe out. There she goes. There's a grommet at the bottom of the air box that we're gonna have to pull up with a little force, but don't be scared. It takes a little bit of wiggling, but you'll get there. Use your hand at the bottom too. There we go. So once she comes loose, you wanna move your negative cables out of the way. That should free up some space for your air box. Ta-da! She's out. One important piece is right here. That's your mass airflow sensor. So this is a little meter that tells the car how much air is coming in. We're gonna be transferring that over to the new pipe in just a sec. Now that we have the air box out, you got a ton more room to work on. You can see a part of that charge pipe that has to be taken off. So the secret is just move that clamp away. Again, pinch it and pull right off. Bam. So there's a 12 mil bolt on the top that holds it into place. We're gonna crack that loose. That's for your hard pipe or your aluminum charge pipe at the top. What I like to do is on these Hanas, they give you a little ledge to put all your extra hardware. Ta-da! On the charge pipe, there are two bolts. There's one near the front half and then one near the back by where the throttle is. You can just push that harness away and you can pull those bolts right out. Ta-da, bolt number two. So there are just two more things you wanna do. You wanna take a pliers, squeeze on the clamp, pull this hose off, and just behind, there's another one of those clips uh, to pull off before you take that charge pipe out. So here's a little trick. Once you get the clamp off, you can take a 90 degree angle pick 
Just rotate it near the bottom, slide it in, and just rock the hose. Now, it should come off with ease. Ta-da! Once you get your clamps off, you're gonna do a little wiggle section. So, after trying to get the uh, pipe out, it is best to just remove the sensor altogether. Ah, that was a lot easier. The pipe is out. Now, the last piece that we gotta get is on the throttle body itself. We're gonna do some jiggling. All right, so we'll pull the one clamp off, mm -hmm. and then we'll go back in there and grab the silicone, or the rubber for, from the throttle body itself. So that is your last piece. All right, so now that we've got the right clamps for this, we're gonna go ahead with our hairspray. And this side is towards the throttle body. Slide that in first. Now get right up against the throttle body. All right, take a look where it is. So what I like to do is position your clamps so that way it's a little easier to tighten up later on. Now we have the aluminum charge pipe that will go in. What they've done is they've made a spot for the boost pressure sensor and also for the hose as well that's gonna be going in. It's a nice little barb fitting. And also, for those guys that wanna run their methanol injection, it has a port already welded into place. So all you have to do is remove that bung and then go ahead and add in your meth kit. All right, so what I like to do is on the little map sensor, I'll go ahead and put a little bit of lubricant on it so that way it slides into the boost pipe easier. Now they do provide a screw as well. So you go ahead and pop that in. Now you're ready to install. Block off the top here while you're spraying your hairspray. We'll get the clamp, don't forget. Put the clamp on in a position where you can get to it. And now slide the pipe in. Okay. So just as before, when you had them come out, now you're gonna put them back in. You got your two screws here that will go into the charge pipe almost just as if it was factory. That's the easy one. And the one that's a little further back, just move that harness out of the way. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten up those two bolts, exactly like factory, we're going in reverse. Move this pipe back, and make this one nice and snug. All right, so you always wanna make sure you tighten up all your clamps. So we're going ahead and uh, tightening up that one more silicone boost coupler clamp up against that charge pipe that PRL created for us. And of course we are gonna connect the connector back in there, nice and snug again. And of course, last but not least, that hose. We're gonna put that hose back on. And that completes the top half there. Go ahead and rock the clamp down. There you go. We got the last part of the puzzle here for your charge pipes. We're gonna go ahead and use that hairspray trick. And this side will go down to the intercooler. This side's up by the top. Put your clamp in down below. Slide that bottom half in first. Now you play the wiggle game. Put that top hose in. There we go. Just like that. What you want to make sure is the top hose will f slide quite a ways up. You want to make sure that bottom hose is on as far as it possibly can. All right, so what we're gonna do here is just tighten up the clamps. So you're using that eight mil on my cheater little extension with the swivel. You wanna make sure you snug it real good. Once the charge pipe's done, we're gonna go ahead and move along to the inlet pipe. There are a few things we're gonna remove to make life easier for us to put it in. So now we have the air box off as well. Actually, forgot to mention that. We're gonna pull this basic wire area here off. This goes to the wastegate. We're gonna pull this little 10 mil right here. We're gonna disconnect this connector just here. There we are. And don't forget the wastegate just down below here. We'll pull the wastegate. There we go. Now everything's accessible. I'm gonna use a pick method to go ahead and open this up. There we go. Ta-da! And that is ready to be worked on just down below here. And go ahead and crack that pipe nice and loose. Sorry, that bolt loose. Once we have it loose, we can pull it out by hand. So since that bolt is all the way in there, what I like to do is use a magnet. That way you're guaranteed not to drop the bolt. Ta-da! Just like that. We're gonna use the cowl to place the bolt down on. Let's go to bolt number two. There we go, cracked it nice and loose. All right, so now that we have those two bolts out, we're gonna crack the coolant lines off, and then two more lines down here. All right, so now that we got the two lines separated, 
your inlet pipe is ready to go. We just have one more bolt here and it's hiding in the corner. So that's the little guy that holds the front half on. You're gonna need an extension, same 10 mil. Super easy to access now that everything's loose. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and wiggle this pipe out. You're gonna wanna pull it towards you and out this way. So there's your old inlet pipe. Do wanna mention this? There is a gasket that you don't want to lose. That's where it will go on to the actual flange that bolts to the turbo. So now with the new inlet pipe, we're going to take the old gasket, bend these little tabs in just a little bit, like this. Then you can pop it onto the flange itself. Now it's on there pretty good. We'll go ahead and slide this in. And now we put the two bolts in. So this little line here, a lot of the times when you're putting that inlet in, you do have to make sure that you don't pinch it up against the flange. So keep a good a close eye out, wiggle that flange until you get it where you need it, and then pop those bolts in. Okay, now that we got the flange on there, we're gonna use the same 12 mil uh, socket that we used earlier, and we're gonna go ahead and tighten it up. Tighten up the last two bolts that we have, and we're gonna go over it with a wrench. Now that we have the inlet in, we're gonna grab the little coupler, it says PRL on it, and that will be placed towards the inlet going on the turbo. Can't forget, a little spritz of this goes a long way. All right, so what I like to do is with the clamps that you'll see all the time, I'll rotate it or almost kind of hide it in behind where the wiring harness and stuff will be. So that way, it looks really nice and clean. All right, so we did forget a part here, but we are gonna pop it over. Don't forget the grommet. It slides in this way and then the metal portion is always at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead, there we go. All right, so for you guys that have forgotten the clamp like I just did, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. Loosen your clamp off, slide it just underneath, and now you're gonna play the fishing game. Wait for it to come back all the way around, and just catch it near the top. So if you forget your clamp, don't you worry. It's a nice, easy fix. All right, so here's a little bit of the tricky part. We're gonna use that OEM bolt. Slide it just in behind. All right, we're gonna make sure all these bolts are nice and tight that go onto the inlet. These are your two coolant pipes. What I like to do is I like to get a extension like so, and just so ever slightly push this away so it has a nice radius for the coolant pipe. It's not touching anything, it's free from anything that it's touching. All right, so in the kit, you are provided this billet aluminum uh, piece that is for your sensor on the top. What this does is it allows it to uh, be adapted to the intake lit or intake tube. So that will go right into it like that. All right, so now that your inlet pipe is done, we have everything ready to go in for the intake box. We're gonna just rest that there for now. Let's attack the wiring for the intake. There are a few clips on the edge of the harness that basically you're gonna be pulling up. So as you go in with your 90 degree pick, you can pull up on it without breaking any tabs. All right, you're gonna continue this all the way through the harness that is L-shaped. All right, so in the kit, Piero provides this little wiring loom. You go ahead, it has a slit or a slot that's open on one side. Start it on the one side and work your way through. All right, so something that you want to do is you could leave the loom like that, but what I like to do is put some electrical tape on it, sandwich it at first, and just run a nice tight weave. All right, so what I like to do once this is nicely taped up, I like to slide this connector in over by a hose here, let it rest just down below, keep it away from where the bottom of the box would be, just down here, move it over just a bit, and now you're good to install the box. All right, so on your stock air box, there is your mass air flow sensor. You're gonna use your Phillips screwdriver, crack them loose, pull them out, and remove your sensor. Now, PRL provides two screws for your new installation on the mass air flow uh, housing itself. So just put these stock ones back in. So that way they don't go missing. All right, also while we're here, if you wanna take a look at the bottom of this ear box, there's a bunch of clips. You're gonna to wanna to pull up on each and every one of them because you're gonna to need to reuse this 
rubber gasket at the end of your install. Okay, last thing on that ear box is right at that bottom, there is a grommet. I'm gonna use some brute force to pull that grommet out. We're gonna use that in just a second. I'll show you where it goes. So to assemble the box, we have the ear box here. We have an ear filter, a flange that will go on the inside, and then your mass airflow housing. You're gonna take your mass airflow sensor and pop it inside. Now the one thing you're gonna realize is if you do get it backwards, it won't line up. So that's not a problem. Pop it into place. Two screws provided from PRL. Pop those into place. It's a three millimeter Allen. Tighten them up. Now you don't have to use Loctite on these bolts because they don't usually come loose at all. Just give it a little snug. Don't go crazy. So that's one part done for the air box. We're going to remove the panel on the front half here. So this is where the easy part comes in. We're going to take your PRL air filter, pop the big clamp that's provided in over the filter, take your flange, slide it in through the opening, and then pop your mass airflow housing in. So to get this into the place where it needs to, just so I can show you guys, you know that this air box will be sitting like this in the car and you know that the mass airflow housing or sensor was actually pointing backwards. So you just line it up to the two closest holes near the top and pop in those screws. All right, so as you can see, just want to line it all up and that's it. So we're going to use a five millimeter Allen and we're going to go ahead and tighten it up. All right, so with the our air filter, what I like to do is I like to cheat. I'll use my 90 degree pick and just get it to go up and over the entirety of the filter. Now, I know no one will ever see it, but I will always straighten this out. So it says PRL. When you're tightening up the clamp, make it so your life is a little easier and just get it near the top. Nice and snug and you do the yank test. So just go ahead and use both hands. Make sure that filter does not come off. Now, putting the cover on is super simple. Exactly the same way we took it off. But remember, shiny side in, texture side out. All right, quick note, when you're tightening up your bolts, you get your three millimeter Allen. Don't go too crazy, because if you do, you'll strip the bolt. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put the rubber back on the box. Fits like stock. All right, from the stock air box, don't forget, we're gonna use the stock grommet, pop it in. And last but not least, the metal portion near the bottom. Now, for the part that'll fight you the most, you're gonna take the grommet that comes from the bottom of the air box and you're gonna work it in to the air box. What I like to do is get everything pretty much lined up. We'll go ahead and pop the air box into place. On the back side, just make sure that negative cable from your battery is out of the way. Line up the grommet from the bottom that we just used. Now, before you push it down, keep it loose and don't forget to put on the last piece of the puzzle. All right, so we're gonna use the clamps. Always pay attention. In this case, we've run all the clamps in the same direction. Face it upwards, pop it on the pipe. We'll do the same for the back half, pop it on the pipe. Now, with everything still moving, you wanna slide it in, no hairspray, because it's nice and easy this time. Vacuum tube that they have here first, then the big one, slide it onto the high or the inlet. And now here comes the part that we can fight a little. So the part that fights you a little, my favorite 90 degree pick. You're gonna grab the pipe from the edge, pull it in with your finger as much as you can, and just push on it with your pick. Now, find the right spot for that air box, and they'll marry together just the same. So now that we have the air box into place, line everything up, including the one screw in the back of the intake box. All right, so what I like to do is I start with that bolt on the back of the air box. We're snugging everything up by hand for now. That's pretty much it. Now just keep it loose because you are gonna have to slide that panel in afterwards, okay? Let's finish up the inlets. So you're gonna wanna rotate everything towards the back of the motor, kind of like so. So then that way you have hood clearance as well. All right, we're getting close to the end here. And as we say it here in the shop, 
It's a gagnon moment. Basically means winner in French. Now, we're pretty much done. We're gonna tighten up these two clamps just down below. But did you remember that wire? Check this out. It makes life so much easier. That wire that we put in behind that vacuum hose here is now a breeze to snap into place. All right, so when you guys are finishing up the car, there's little checks you wanna do. In this case, PRL provides that uh, billet flange, but you always wanna make sure it has that hood clearance. Put the hood down, use your eyes since the bumper's off. Yep, nice and clear. All right, so we're not quite done the job, but I always like to make sure we started before we put the bumper on. Since we did all the boost pipes, it's now the easiest to get to them if something does come loose. It's a uh, little past 12 and we just finished our install for the intake, the charge pipe and the titanium, titanium inlet. As always, Installs with Andrews are the best installs. Thank you, Andrew. You're welcome, no problem. And uh, yeah, can't wait to hear this thing. Rip. It's gonna be pretty nice. All right, scale of one to ten. How do you like the noises now? Just by revving. With the holes in the hood <laughs> so that allows me to hear it even more. It's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. So we're gonna say that's a ten. We're happy. Ten. <laughs> Perfect. Let's get to driving.